Alexey Mikhailovich, esteemed colleagues, uh, it's for me it's a great honor to present here uh, uh, the presentation about the uh, life of my teacher, Professor Rurik Melnikov. He's a, a true surgeon and oncologist, and in my talk, of course, I will talk about those advantages he gained, you know, he had with regard to some modern approaches in teaching surgeons, and I would like to once again to thank for such an honor. Rurik Melnikov, he was born in Kharkov on the uh, 12th of November, 1924, in the family, uh, uh, his parents, his, the name of his parents were Alexandra and uh, uh, Alexander and Natalia. His uh, father was a doctor from early years. He uh, actually can visit uh, clinics and hospital, uh, see the patients. And the, uh, it could end up uh, in two ways. He would never come to medicine anymore in the being in adulthood or will stay with medicine forever. And the uh, uh, and uh, Alexander Melnikov, he was a, a general a general of medical service, and he was a head of the uh, first Russian uh, manual on oncology. He developed the uh, works on uh, uh, on metastasizing pathways uh, in uh, stomach cancer. He developed rational methods for surgery of virus uh, tumors. So in 1942, uh, Rurik Melnikov, he entered Military Medical Academy. Till 1946, he was a student there. And in 1947, he graduated the uh, therapeutic uh, uh, department of the first Leningrad Medical Institute named after Pavlov. And then all his career uh, developed in one uh, hospital, uh, Research Institute of Oncology named after Petrov. And the Institute Turek Melnikov in 1952 defended his uh, PhD thesis. In 1993, his uh, doctoral thesis. In 1969, he was awarded uh, with a title of professor in 1979 as an honorary uh, researcher of the Russian Federation. And uh, in, uh, and he worked in the Institute of Pnet, named, uh, named after Petrov. Petrov, uh, actually, he's a founder of uh, domestic or Russian oncology. In 1927, he uh, set up the first Institute of Oncology. In 1931, he organized the first All-Union uh, Congress on Oncology. So he actually influenced uh, Rurik Melnikov, being he, one of his first teachers, being one, being one of the uh, mm, most closest uh, uh, students of academician Petrov, Melnikov worked with him for many years, and he uh, dedicated lots of time to the uh, theoretical issues of modern oncology, which is very, very important in those days, because we will show you that Rurik Melnikov gained considerable experience in both uh, fundamental and experimental oncology, which considerably uh, influenced uh, his uh, knowledge and his uh, um, skills when he uh, started to develop practical issues. In 1955, Rurik Melnikov uh, created unique experience in, in uh, on induction of uh, uh, cancers in primates. These experiments were done in the uh, town of Sehumi at the basis of the unique research uh, veterinary lab. I don't think they have this, uh, this laboratory these days there anymore, but he was very lucky. And uh, here you see his first uh, photos of his first ex uh, um, experiments. Rurik Melnikov is very important. For the first time, he used radioactive isotopes of cobalt and silver being introduced to the uh, um, uh, to the uh, Heimer uh, sinus. Uh, he d he developed uh, he managed to develop uh, various uh, tumors, and uh, it's very important. Uh, and this work, uh, uh, and he and, and his work, uh, he developed uh, in his works. He was first to induce in the uh, cancer in uh, uh, apes, and he and he. And he also he um, pr conducted his first experiments uh, uh, developing epithelial uh, cancer. Also, uniting his uh, experimental data on induction with chemical consergence and uh, malignancies of uh, maxillary malignancies, he published 
uh, the uh, mm, he published a book experimental pathophysiology of bone uh, tumors also uh, he published large studies dedicated to the clinical issues of uh, maxillar uh, tumors in his works uh, he provided methods for diagnosis and treatment taking into account the stage morphology and uh, long-term outcomes this work was published as a manual uh, clinical issues on maxillar tumors in 1971 in some of his works he discussed issues of various uh, diagnostics of the uh, skeleton tumors and uh, as a final stage of this works was publications of the manual uh, together with Viktor Sukhrev, uh, Complex Combined Diagnosis of Bone Tumors, published in 1974. However, after the Institute of Oncology moved to the town of Pesochne, where it is located since 1964, Rurik uh, Melnikov uh, became a head of the unit on uh, GIS, uh, GIS tumors, being transformed later on in the coloproctology units which he actually had it for almost 30 years. Naturally, at the first stages, uh, they studied the main tumor location, meaning stomach cancer. They studied each of his diagnosis and treatment. Also, he developed in lots of detail. Also, this were developed by Rurik Melnikov. And since he uh, also should take into account that he actually completed unfinished uh, book by his father, Academician Alexander Melnikov, on this, this issue. And later on, uh, his uh, point of view was considerably uh, influenced by Simon Holdin, who actually uh, uh, who actually was a, um, uh, actually worked with him on this issue and headed him. And his manual, uh, Rectal Malignancies, is still one of the most important books for the surgeons, oncologists, and oncoproctologists because he suggested, and later on, Rurik Melnikov developed further the works on the zone and compartments uh, in the, of the uh, rectal tumors, which further on, due to the works by Bill Hilden, uh, turned into the uh, total olin maserectum, which we will talk about uh, today. But it has been started in our clinic, uh, headed by Rurik Melnikov. These are the main waypoints of the uh, in the contribution by Professor Melnikov in oncoproctology. First of all, synchronous uh, two-team uh, interventions uh, in rectal cancer patients. It seems to be today the very, uh, so to say, uh, usual practice. But it was lots of doubts those days. It was discussed a lot. And it wasn't very easy to organize. And today we know that simultaneous interventions in, uh, from the abdominal side and uh, peritoneal side uh, considerably diminishes trauma, tissue trauma in pelvis and makes it possible to follow those principles of anatomic zones and compartments. Also, synchronous interventions with, by two surgical teams uh, um, enables uh, much faster and clearer mobilization of rectum which almost two times diminishes the time of intervention and considerably improves the post-op uh, management. And also synchronous uh, surgery decreases the intraoperational uh, complication rate from 7.5 to 2.5 percent. And still, in the United States, all uh, uh, interventions, in this, uh, many of the interventions are done in two uh, surgical team. In Europe, though in Europe they use different uh, interventions, with uh, mm, but still the method of uh, two team interventions uh, in those years was a considerable revolutionary step. And then the age; it was very important. Uh, uh, surgery of uh, rectal cancer in uh, patients above 70. That even in the 60s, the age above 60 used to be considered as a contraindication for radical interventions above 60. And there were lots of such patients those days. And therefore, uh, Yuri Kamelnikov suggested we should overcome it. And we will not study. We said, let's look at the tumors in, uh, and outcomes in persons above 70. And it showed that the, the age above 70 cannot be considered as contraindication for radical interventions in uh, rectal cancer patients, and it shouldn't be the cause for refusing them from uh, being treated. 
and uh, the and surgery should be done in those patients in the same radical manner as in younger age. So it was discussed. Uh, it's he's above 60 or 70. We should make let's do small surgery. Many used to say, but studies by Professor Melnikov he showed that the age per se could not be considered as a reason for refusal or for the less of the uh, less uh, so to say uh, size less. Uh, mm, uh, uh, less than the, uh, so to say, uh, the intervention, uh, so to say, uh, uh, volume. Of course, there could be, uh, so, the, the, and in our clinic, even if uh, there is some acute pathology, uh, coronary fa uh, insufficiency, we move persons to uh, specialist clinics, then they are treated there and they come back to us and they undergo uh, radical interventions due to the works by Alexander, uh, by Rurik Melnikov. I remember that our oldest patient, he was a, uh, she was a Moscovite, she came to us and she was more than 90. And for you know, five years she came to us uh, for five years uh, 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 and she, so she came to, she used to come to us until her 96 years of age. So I think that later on we'll see that uh, patients above 90, it's not also in intrication. Then Gartman into surgery. Uh, Rurik Melnikov was wondered why it wasn't considered as a radical intervention. Now you would wonder, of course, you'll say, how, how come? But I remember as Rurik Mel, uh, Melnikov at, the, at our conference uh, said, uh, Gartman surgery was done... Uh, uh, Garman surgery was done in non-radical fashion, and why we should treat her further on. And that was a study done that the, uh, the uh, uh, relapse rate after Garman surgery was about 8%, and it's also quite high. Both two interventions, intraperitoneal or anterior resection of uh, rectum, they are different from Garman interventions, was only one thing, was only with its reconstructive stage. In other words, radical uh, radical intervention, all those uh, blood vessels, uh, they, uh, uh, they are ligated at the same level. And uh, for <coughs> Gartman surgery, what do you call a stoma? And that's the difference. Uh, but in the radical way, the Gartman intervention is also a radical intervention, which uh, can be used, especially in cases of uh, complicated, uh, in especially in complicated cases, any uh, elder, uh, old patients. The study has been done in our clinic, and it's still it's still used in our uh, hospital. Uh, family dermatitis uh, polyposis. And here we see uh, here we have lots of patients, uh, lots of people with great experience in such patients. But since Rurik Melnikov, uh, he he interested in those issues because uh, Center of Coloproctology, he treats various problems, uh, both uh, cancer and non-cancer disorders, and no one actually used to study those issues in St. Petersburg. In St. Petersburg, there were lots of such patients in St. Petersburg, and he had it, uh, the studies on this topic here in St. Petersburg. So we started to develop indications on uh, surgery of such patients. And it came to a conclusion that surgical treatment of such patients with family dermatitis polyposis should be considered as a method of choice. Again, you, you, you'd laugh at that. It's nothing new in that. But I do remember those years when he talked about that. Uh, and some of us do remember it, that there was a method of uh, uh, the, the, uh, and there uh, was widely used uh, the method of treatment uh, of, so to say, uh, with uh, celandine, uh, and I remember that he wrote a big article with criticism on using celandine to treat such patients, and he asked her to support him, and we, uh, and then later, later on, now the celandine method cannot be considered as an adequate uh, method of treatment of family polypos polyposis at all. Surgery, of course, a method of choice. And surgery should be done in the shortest possible term after diagnosis, because uh, uh, waiting would uh, lead to losing time, worsen the, con uh, losing, uh, worsen the condition and progression of the disease. And of course, when we 
when we uh, treated about 100, 120 patients, we could clearly see that if patients came to us in the age of 28 or 30, then we had none of them later on who would have only adamantous polyposis. They all developed cancer. Uh, and that was a conclusion that the, herb, uh, the, the earlier we diagnose the disease, the earlier we treat them surgically, the more chances we will avoid cancer in the future and prognosis will be much, much more uh, uh, advantageous. And besides, uh, family dermatitis polyposis uh, leading to cancer, it's of course a very uh, bad disease. For instance, we do remember we saw the patients with severe complications. We brought him to the uh, ICU and tried to prepare him to treatment. Regretfully, he died even without surgery. I mean, family dermatitis polyposis results in very severe complications and it could, uh, it could result in uh, retardation, physical retardation. And it's uh, and, uh, timely treatment is very important. Method and uh, volume of surgery is very important. Uh, first of all, it is determined and determined uh, by the age uh, of uh, uh, patients, and we should uh, reach uh, or strive for total or subtotal uh, intervention. And and some of you will say, of course, it's natural, uh, but still. Many uh, those days they consider that total coloprotectomy, but even subtotal col colectomy, is a too traumatic intervention. They thought, and they suggested to uh, sort of stage it to do it uh, right side hemicolectomy and left side uh, hemicolectomy. And uh, Rurik Melnikov proved that uh, this staging uh, lengthened too much the time for intervention. And one patient, uh, and uh, also there is a risk of cancer. Uh, it increases even the risk of cancer later on. That's why we should do the surgery only single stage. Uh, then uh, salvaging rectum. Of course, it's a very important issue. Uh, and Derek Malnikov thought that we might leave rectum if if she has only solitary polyps without signs of malignancy, so endoscopists could remove it, but it was a very uh, cautious issue to discuss. Uh, so he, he was very loyal. You could leave something mm, in the right part where, uh, 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 of the colon, but the rectum and the left part of the colon, they're in the highest risk zone. So, but, and again, we should see all the solitary polyps and uh, uh, than early colorectal cancer. We're talking to that too much. We're treating such patients. We'll see interventions which could be done in case of uh, early cancer. But what, what, how to define the early cancer? And in, in the 70s and 80s, there was a study handled by Melnikov who said the early colorectal cancer, it covers all those tumors. Uh, limited only with the mucosa and some mucosa mm, uh, of uh, colon with uh, minimal uh, probability of metastasis. Uh, and I'll actually, he was quite right. There are two types of definitions of early cancer. It's morphological definition, which seems to be the best one, the most proper one. If the tumor cannot mm, uh, produce metastasis, uh, then from the point from the point of view of uh, pathomorphology, only such tumors could be considered as early ones. We as clinicians could uh, expand those definitions, as uh, Rurik Melnikov suggested. And it's very important to understand what and how could be related to the early cancer from surgical point of view. I'd like to say that those patients where we could use some local dissections in, the, in submucosa, or some local uh, resections. If you can do it, then those tumors is better to be uh, called as early cancer. Those tumors where we will not do radical intervention in the standard, so to say, volume. That was a clinical notion, uh, first mentioned by Rurik Melnikov. When started to talk to that, that removal of colon polyps is the most uh, reasonable and the only method to, for so, surgical prevention of uh, colorectal cancer, and we don't know what is the primary uh, cancer 
prevention, and we don't know it those reasons anymore. And secondary prevention, meaning fighting the pre-cancer uh, disorders and early cancer. And uh, Rudik Melnikov introduced such a notion as a surgery cancer prevention, meaning polypectomy and removing uh, early uh, cancers. And there was lots of disputes about this uh, that issue. But the idea of Rudik Melnikov introduced in uh, Leningrad the program of the uh, endoscopic uh, treating of those patients, uh, both with complaints and without complaints, it seems like we will diminish not only mortality but even morbidity. But it's a considerable organizational issues. And even the days when Rudik Melnikov mentioned it, it was uh, quite hard to set up. Uh, these days it's even uh, more problematic. But theoretical understanding and uh, definitions of early colorectal cancer it was very important. So the cancer uh, with adenomid, uh, the background limited with only mucosa and submucosa. In such cases, the tumor, uh, the surgery could be limited only with the res just with the resection. Uh, it was a revolutionary approach. When we talked to the surgeons once at the Pirogov Society meeting, the people were shocked. They said, how your oncologists couldn't mention it in the Institute of Oncology. Rurik Melnikov, we're looking at you. You always told us that you should do interventions following uh, all the principles of uh, uh, radicality. Now you're saying that you can just resect it because modern methods, uh, no, uh, they were unknown. And uh, so we shouldn't do that, we should do it like that. But the local excision of the tumor, mucosal uh, dissection, some mucosal dissection, using modern devices which didn't uh, exist as, uh, those days, we can do it. And we did it, it was quite hard, but we did it. And we obtained very good results. Uh, and the tumor is limited with mucosa and some mucosa. The local excision effectiveness was almost uh, similar to radical interventions. Five-year uh, survival rate was about 95%. So it was an important issue. We should assess, if we assess properly, the spread of the process, uh, uh, spread of the process, uh, process, it will determine further intervention uh, volume. And so, of course, we progressed with surgery and technology, but those theoretical uh, statements developed by Rurik Melnikov is very important. It's important even these days. And uh, what is a failure? They try to excise T1, even T2 tumors. The, it, it's the failure is related to the fact that staging is not right. You try to excise a local excised tumor, which uh, which much uh, considerable spread, but it's not the uh, it's not the method uh, uh, fault. It's a fault of the doctor who didn't uh, so to say assess the tumor properly. Then another important part which I wanted to show to you. We uh, we and. Uh, uh, we assessed uh, influence of various signs on survival rate of post-op patients. What are the signs to look at? It's the invasion depths, regenerative metastasis, pre-op radiation, type of surgery and location of the tumor and rectum. They were not of considerable uh, influence. What I want to show to you, depths of invasion and regenerative met metastasis, they determine the uh, how um, the volume, so to say, of intervention. Uh, Yuri Melnikov, one was the first saying that the tumor, uh, that the surgery, which is a golden standard in treating uh, rectal cancer patients, could be considered as inadequate if uh, if the tumor is limited with uh, with the layers of wall tumor. If the tumor just goes goes beyond the wall, uh, colon wall, then the, the additional intervention is required, in particular radiation. Our clinic used to be one of the first where we started to study the problems of the combined treatment of uh, colorectal cancer. And I should say that those three clinics, which I would mention, they're still the same. Time hasn't changed. It's our clinic, the clinic of the Russian Ecology Research Center, headed by Professor Knesh those days, and center in Oblinsk, headed by uh, Yuri Berdov. Those three centers, uh, they, they had more experience in, in such patients, and still it is the case. 
And maybe it's not a big wonder because such missions, they require considerable specialization, good equipment. And of course, the launch in new centers, uh, purchasing the equipment and uh, without any experience in treating such things, maybe it doesn't make big sense. So those uh, studies are uh, continued there. And for the first time, such study has been conducted. And of course, we changed those methods. The treatment started uh, in case of, so to say, focus uh, radiation therapy five by five for uh, several days uh, with uh, immediate intervention after that. And all the due to inter uh, introduction of such method, we managed to improve survival rate by 15%. Think about that, it was quite a lot and considerably decreased the relapse uh, rate. And we had about 500 patients who were treated in such a way. It was those years when we, no one were uh, looking from the modern position. Yeah, there was no MRI. We couldn't define clearly if all the patients are indicated for that. And um, Eric Melnikov believes that additional methods of treatment, they will, of course, improve the results. And based on the other the surgery, which uh, could, uh, which was at, at its uh, at its edge, and the tumor is an, uh, can uh, spread in, in a limited way. So it's very important to study this. The study was done. The treatment was done. What quite a, a long while. And after the uh, after Yuri Yuri Kmelnikov passed away, we co we continued those studies. We tried to provide post-op pro extended. Uh, radiation therapy, and we came to a conclusion that uh, pre- and post-op therapy, it's not that the same thing. Uh, post-op uh, radiation is much less, uh, considerably less effective, and try to do, uh, the, so to say, we try to use a sandwich mask to do about 20 gray in a pre-op mode and do the surgery, then look at the histology, uh, and if and then uh, continue radiation if necessary, but those results also were found to be not really effective. It happens. The negative result is also a result. At least we tried it. And starting from 2008, we switched to uh, the following. After looking at the works of Gabor Gamma, we we decided to do extended uh, chemo radiation therapy, which we involve in our clinics, but I will tell about this a little bit later. So this is how we uh, managed to improve our results. Uh, actually, this is the end of it. Uh, the end of this graph is the year 2008, uh, the year 2000, and you can see the percentage here, which amounted to 72, and these figures tell for themselves. So the results uh, uh, is, the, is this paper, which uh, is a publication of the results, and you can see here, uh, this is a photo that demonstrates two classical scientists for you, the academician of Russian Academy of Sciences, the person who actually started the oncological radicalism with Professor Melnikov, who modified all this for the patients with colorectal cancer. I would like to say that my time is limited, but I would like to say a couple of uh, words about his um, uh, not only scholastic aptitudes, but also about his uh, very apt and uh, uh, very um, uh, how apt he was as a surgeon. And generally speaking, you uh, could have learned a lot from him, but only when you were already a prepared, very uh, um, ready surgeon. And for the first time, he started working on rehabilitation programs for the oncology, oncology patients, and he was head of the international rehabilitation program in the world, alongside with his uh, colleagues from the United States. And uh, he had several aspects of rehabilitation the, uh, the, um, um, for the patients of, with colorectal cancers and uh, breast cancer. And he also published a number of scientific and uh, uh, scientific papers and the brochure, the, which was titled uh, Cancer, the Problems of Prevention and Treatment, alongside with prof Professor and Academician Serebrov. He was very popular not only in Russia, but also abroad. And he made uh, speeches in several international conferences in London, in Houston, in New York. He also had a, a scholarship from the WHO, and he worked for a certain uh, time in uh, the leading uh, clinics in the United States of America in uh, this, as early as in the 70s. He also presented in New York, in Ch Chicago, and many other uh, countries of the world. And he had uh, joint studies alongside with the scientists from Czechoslovak Republic, from um, 
Hungary and many other countries of Europe in uh, from Finland as well he also um, applied uh, homemade domestic made suture materials for uh, patients with uh, stomach cancer and uh, you should remember that in the Soviet Union we had best uh, suture materials because generally speaking uh, that was exactly something that was developed in our country and uh, abroad specialists usually remember about it and uh, unfortunately right now we have to buy all suturing materials abroad he was also the president of the problem committee on the diagnostic of mal uh, uh, malignant malformations uh, affiliated to the Russian Academy of Medical Sciences he was also the chief oncologist of Leningrad and Leningrad district and he was awarded six uh, medals for his achievements uh, in uh, medicine. He published uh, 270 papers, out of which uh, eight are full-size books. And uh, he had several um, students, PhD students, who are at the moment are his students at the moment uh, are uh, work all over uh, the country, and they are heads of hospitals, chief physicians, and chief oncologists of uh, huge hospitals and regions. He worked a lot with the students, and he had a lot of. And uh, if we had any disputes, uh, we always uh, could give him a call. And he came over to uh, our staff room and uh, started uh, disc uh, taking part in the discussion. And you can see the pre-operative planning here, alongside with all of us. And uh, this is exactly the tradition that we still follow. These are his multiple students. Uh, I would like to say that he was a wonderful person, very hospitable person, and we very frequently came over to his flat and or to his uh, summer cottage. Uh, the 8th of March actually was exactly the day when uh, we had meetings at his home, and this is one of the very last meetings. You can see everybody here, people from the uh, Middle East, from Central Asia, all his uh, students actually traveled over to him. He loved him a lot, and he loved uh, talking uh, to them and spending time with him. Uh, generally speaking, he had he was very knowledgeable uh, in surgery, in clinical surgery, and also in clinical oncology. He had a wide field of interest and very wide horizons. And we can say that this was one of the most talented person uh, who did a lot for the development of not only Russian oncology, but uh, oncological science as such all over the world. This is. Uh, how he looked like, and uh, this is uh, him sitting at home and communicating with his friends. And uh, I would like to say that he had wonderful family. And uh, I would like to say that uh, he had three children. Uh, the elder one is uh, the uh, uh, he actually um, he had three uh, three children. So uh, the. Uh, elder son is a, uh, one of the chief oncologists of one of our clinics. Anastasia Melnikova is an actress, and uh, although uh, her father treated it, uh, this field uh, quite skeptically, nonetheless, he, she managed to prove it to his father that she is a great actor. At the moment, she, uh, she is not only an actress, but also a very famous personality of our city. And uh, this photo doesn't show the youngest son. Uh, he is. Um, this is his family, and I would like to finalize my lecture with the following uh, quotation. We know a lot because we are uh, standing on the shoulders of our uh, teachers, and uh, actually we are very grateful to our teacher, uh, Rurik Milnikov. Thank you.